Hello everyone from uh, all over the world and uh, this is stage 11 2019 Tour de France preview. Well after an uh, uh, incredible massacre uh, on stage 10 to Albi the riders are going south. They're going more into the the country of Cathars and their sprint finishing over in Toulouse, right? So getting a little bit more south now and uh, um, there are two issues that we're facing. There's actually more but two major issues that we're going to start to face is number one, the heat, the heat of the entire south of France. So tomorrow is going to be a first hot day for the riders. The temperature is going to be 31 Celsius or uh, if you're in Fahrenheit zone it's going to be 89 90 degrees so it's getting really hot out there uh, you know the weather has been perfect for the tour so I'm expecting a rainy day at some point but the first problem that we're uh, the riders are going to be facing tomorrow is um, <clears throat> you know the heat 89 degrees or 31 Celsius so it's getting really hot now the second problem uh, that we've already faced on, uh, um, that we, uh, the writers, already faced on stage 10 is what? The echelons, the crosswinds. And uh, this could happen because there's actually a lot of open terrain on the way to Toulouse. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, I checked the wind for tomorrow on the route and it's you know it says eight kilometers sustained but the wind gusts are going to be between 20 and 25 kilometers and even more so although it doesn't look like it's going to be a particularly windy day after the massacre on the roads to Albi everyone is going to be absolutely nervous so that alone you know, will cause uh, another issue, a danger of crashes, because everybody's going to want to be up front and nobody's going to want to relax because they want to avoid the disaster that happened um, on stage 10. Um, and I'm not expecting for the echelon, so the wind to be a problem because it just doesn't look like it's going to be strong enough. The problem, though, is going to be more of a psychological for team directors and um, director sportives and, uh, um, you know, riders specifically. That nervousness alone will might cause a one or two crashes, especially as we get closer to Toulouse. So watch out for, um, uh, you know, wind maybe not playing as big of an issue as it did um yesterday but still uh you know be a factor in this race and you know be a be a problem in terms of everybody is just getting nervous uh all the time and people are fighting for position so you know there also may be some kind of a truce behind going out in the cars that you know team directors just for the day decide that <clears throat> they won't ride sometimes that happens so you know we'll just have to see to the stage now, definitely, there's going to be, a, you know, because it's a relatively short 167-kilometer uh, gently rolling stage, we only have two category climbs, and they come pretty early. Um, you know, I'm expecting one of those suicide breakaways to go, right? And, um, you know, I'm thinking... Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking the usual guys. Um, so what I'm thinking of is uh, uh, there's going to be a representation from Arkea, um, Wanty Gobert. There's going to be definitely guys from CCC there, Confetti's, uh, Direct Energy, maybe Katusha guys are going to be there. Maybe a guy from AG2R, right, representing the sponsor callers, giving them the, you know, the commercial time. But, you know, in all honesty, it's pretty much a suicide break, at, you know, um, on a terrain like this, right? Where, you know, the peloton has the last chance for the sprinters, uh, <clears throat> you know, to win before what, you know, before pretty much the Pyrenees, 
the time trial and the Alps coming up right after. So there's really not a lot of chances left anymore for this printer. Now it doesn't mean that it's going to be a sprint because there is a secret sting within the last five kilometers to go. And I'll talk about this, right? There's something. Um, you know, watch for, I just really have this thing for uh, Van Avermaet, right? Watch CCC. They tried, but, you know, the plan changed because of the echelons on uh, stage 10. But it appeared to me like they were putting a man in a breakaway for Van Avermaet to have a chance to attack. Right, so uh, uh, you know, watch for them to try to do something like this. Watch CCC put men in a breakaway uh, with a thought of uh, setting up Van Avermaet because of that last sting in the last five kilometers. Um, you know, with uh, with four kilometers to go, I mean, pretty, pr you know, pretty. Uh, flat out kind of a scenario for tomorrow, right? Early hills, then there's a sprint finish at 87 kilometers. So everything should be kind of cleaned up after the, in the first part of the stage. But within, from about 5.5 kilometers on, so the, the sprinters teams are already up front, they're driving, the breakaways probably already caught, right? Um, but within 5.5 kilometers to go, there's a hill, all right? And it's uncategorized, but it looks pretty serious um, on the profile. And uh, it is 1.5 kilometers long. And, uh, you know, the uh, I checked on a GPS, I checked on a map, and it's, uh, it's about 4.6% average so 4.6 percent average for a sprinter for 1.5 kilometers when you're going flat out is is an issue right could take out power from certain fast sprinters so i had i had a detailed look at the whole map of that um of that last hill and uh this is what it revealed to me so it revealed to me that it has a section of 250 meters at 7%. It revealed to me that it had 200 meters um, at 6%. And it has a small section of 100 meters, or just about there, like I think it was like 80 meters at 9%. So it does have a little of a sting, right? Um, um, right in the middle of it, and it kind of, uh, if I can pull it up, um, if I can show you, it kind of looks like this. This is the, f uh, the sprint finish, right? You can see it. You see that hill? It starts from 5.5 kilometers, and it, uh, um, it goes over the top at 4 kilometers. The elevation gain is 51 meters in 1 kilometer, so it does have a steeper section yeah, it's not very big, but it still, you know, could spur some riders to attack over the top, especially when you have a descent that actually goes into about 2.7 kilometers left. So it, it, it certainly could happen, right? So this is how it looks. This is the, the last kilometers of the stage tomorrow, okay? Um, so, you know, some of the strong classic guys may fancy this chance and, you know, I spoke about Van Avermaet, I spoke about their tactics and I really think they missed out on a couple of stages here and I'm just thinking that this could be still a stage for, for Van Avermaet, right? Um, so if there is an attack and I really think they will be, I really think somebody could try. Uh, even if the trains are going to be really flat out. Now, depending on the, obviously, if there's going to be a crash or a split in the peloton, but I think Greg Van Avermaet will have a go, right? Powerful rider, could do really well from 2 kilometers, 2.7 kilometers when that descent ends uh, from that last hill, could survive. Uh, this is kind of like a... You know, I don't want to really compare it to Milan Sanremo because Poggio is uh, harder, right? But this is like a mini kind of a hill from Milan Sanremo in a way. Um, so um, another one that I really like is Nicky Terpstra, right? Powerful rider, 
Uh, we saw him on the break, but on the wrong stage for him because it was just way too hilly for him. So it was the stage with De Ghent and De Marquis. So, you know, I don't think it was the right stage for Terpstra. Maybe he was doing it for training, but this one looks really good for him. I mean, huge classic rider uh, and could really have a very powerful turn of speed, especially in about 2.7 kilometers to the end, right? Another one that's really interesting is Kalmajan. We saw him try. He stayed out for about two kilometers. This could be the stage for him. Rui Costa will, you know, may uh, try again. Betiol, right, from EF Energy is good on stuff like that. Uh, Rohan Dennis. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Rohan Dennis, right, the time trial guy, could do really well on something like this. He could just time trial all the way to the finish. If he has the strength to uh, um, to break away if he's on form, um, you know Tony Martin. Although he's probably gonna be busy, um, you know mustering his troops for Jumbo, right? Um, uh, so you know he could be another one. Um, actually, this is Tony Martin on Jumbo, right? Tony Martin. Tony Martin, I think, is on Jumbo. Yeah, Tony Martin is on Jumbo. All right. Um, well, you know, the, the bottom line is there could be an attack uh, on the hill starting from five kilometers to go over the top to the end. Whether it survives or not, there's a question. Another question that's going to be really interesting is how much will that 1.5 kilometer, 4.6% hill hurt the pure sprinter, how much power it'll take away from him. So it's going to be really interesting if Bora and Sunwhip will recognize that again and try to ride as hardest as they can so they can drop Kellop Ewan and Elia Viviani and maybe even, you know, maybe even like somebody like Kristoff, right? So, um, you know, uh, again, it's kind of like a hard thing for fantasy because, uh, um, you know, you could have two different scenarios, two, three different scenarios here. You could have a guy break away at the hill. You could have, a, 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 you know, a, a, a Bora and Sunweb ride, ride really hard to drop a couple of sprinters, or you could have a pure sprint in the end. So uh, anyway, it, really interesting that they put that hill in and really interesting that, you know, it's not categorized, at least at like category four. Right? Um, so, you know, I, I'm just, you know, looking forward to it. So, my favorites for tomorrow, okay? Um, boy, uh, if the break, if there is no attack over the hill, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure there's going to be an attack, but if the attack over the hill does not survive, who do I pick? That's the question. Um, I would say, right, um, my five-star favorite is going to be, I'm going to have three. I'm going to have Ella Viviani, right? He must be feeling frustrated from losing to Von Art. okay? That was completely unexpected. Uh, by the way, did you see his face, right? This was like a clip of his face, right? And he just turned around and he couldn't believe that he got beaten out of the group of like 30 guys. By somebody um, so I think he's surely motivated and I think he's gonna be there in the end so Elia Viviani would be probably my top pick okay my favorite if I had to pick one I think uh, um, I think Van Aert super amazing writer first Tour de France he's competing all over the place I think he may fancy his chance if Grunewagen gets dropped right, on that last hill. Um, I think also Caleb Ewan is, you know, I'm really hoping for him to get that win, um, that, that kind of like a first thing in a Tour de France, it kind of like elevates you as a sprinter, right? That's like a one of the like last things for the sprinters to do because you're competing against the best in the world. Tour de France really defines the sprinters. The Grand Tours really define 
you know, who's the best sprinter in the world. So I'm really wishing for him to get this, right? It's more of a kind of like a heartfelt, uh, 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 you know, prediction. Um, so those are my five-star picks. Four-star picks is the other guys in the pack, right? Peter Sagan is always going to be there in a the mix, okay? Uh, Grunewagen, right, if he survives, I'm not sure if he's going to survive that hill. Um, Alexander Kristoff, of course, is another guy. Giacomo Nizzolo, always there in the top ten. Michael Matthews, not a sprint for him. I would rather see him honestly attack on that hill than anything else because he's just clearly not as fast as the top five guys in this race. Um, you know, uh, if, you know, I always got to put Greeple in there. He, f he's, he said he feels better, okay? Uh, the gorilla may get through. He's better on the hills. So he may get through uh, to whatever the, the selection is after the, the final hill, four kilometers to go. So um, I'm really hoping the gorilla gets in top 10 this time. And, you know, I mean, how is he going to be on, uh, uh, you know, in Paris? We'll have to see. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't have to tell you, Andre Gripel is one of the, the, you know, the favorite guys in the peloton, commentator's favorite guy. Uh, one of you know the fans favorite guys he's been in there for for years he's a legend uh, legend of the tour de france legend of the sprint uh, part of the line of a great german sprinters so uh you know certainly a legend and i would love for him to win another one but we have to be realistic so i'm gonna say he comes this time in top 10. um all right, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave me a comment, okay? In, again, kind of excited um, for tomorrow. I kind of like set my schedule. Uh, I work remotely, so I kind of like, um, <clears throat> you know, set my schedule to go around the Tour de France, all right? Uh, uh, so I'm definitely going to be watching tomorrow. Let me know what you think, what your picks are for tomorrow's Stage 11, okay? And uh, if you have any questions, any thoughts, uh, uh, you know, just uh, comment, uh, subscribe if you like it, hit like if you like it, all right? Take care and uh, um, keep writing, all right?